My boyfriend secretly paid our bills by selling my jewelry inherited from my grandmother. I feel insulted. Should I break up with him? Before starting this exciting story, I will ask you to dial 1,000 subscribers on my channel. I love you very much. So let's get started. I'm a 33-year-old woman and my boyfriend, who is 34, and I have been together for over 12 years. We first met in high school and were friends for a few years before losing touch after he graduated. We reconnected when I was in college, and we've been together ever since. About seven years ago, we reached a critical point in our relationship. His friend had tragically passed away in an accident, which caused my boyfriend to spiral into destructive behaviors. He started experimenting with drugs, staying out all night, and engaging in very reckless behavior, which truly frightened me. I tried everything I could to help him out of it, and it took a lot of effort, and me nearly leaving him for him to start putting his life back together. A bit of background about me. I work for my family's business and have done so since I was 18. Honestly, it would be great if I didn't have to work with the same people I see during holidays because my family can be quite toxic. There is a lot of infighting and drama, making both our personal lives and work environment stressful and chaotic. When my grandmother passed away about three years ago, I inherited some liquid assets from her and my grandfather, including gems, jewelry, precious metals, cash, etc., as well as their house, which they had owned since the 1960s. This inheritance felt like a blessing because it finally gave me the opportunity to break free from my family, leave the family business, and pursue something I was passionate about by going back to school. However, at that time, I had no savings and wanted to accumulate a decent amount before quitting my job. An opportunity arose at work that offered significantly higher pay, but required four, seven months of travel each year. After discussing it with my boyfriend, we decided that we only needed two years to save up what we needed. So I took the job and prepared to leave for two months of training at the main branch. About a month into my training, my boyfriend suddenly quit his job without any explanation other than, I had to, I can't work there anymore. I was concerned about our financial goals because of this sudden decision, but he assured me that he would find a new job shortly and wouldn't need any help with his personal bills. However, a year went by, and he only took on gig work and temporary jobs. Although I wasn't happy about this situation, especially since I was traveling all the time and had to be extremely frugal to cover all our joint bills while also saving money, I let it slide because he managed to pay his own bills and contributed what he could to our joint expenses. Now, as I'm about to complete my two years in this soul-crushing job that has kept me away from home for weeks or even months at a time, my boyfriend has decided to come clean to me. For the past two years, while I've been missing birthdays, weddings, friends' baby showers, and other important events due to my job's demands, he has been hiding something significant from me. I've sacrificed the last two years of my life to save enough money to finally live the life I want. Last week, my boyfriend confessed that he has been paying his personal bills by selling the items my grandparents had willed to me. These items were stored in a safe hidden in our house a safe he had access to only because it also contained a hunting rifle. I never imagined he would betray my trust like this. The amount he sold was substantial, and just thinking about it makes me nauseous. I've already initiated the process of quitting my job and given my notice, but now I find myself with so much less than I had planned. He only told me because he had recently secured a stable job and figured out a way to pay me back. He planned to use most of his paycheck to reimburse me until everything was made whole. Despite his intentions to make amends, I feel utterly disgusted and violated. This situation has left me wondering if this is his default pattern. When life gets stressful and changes occur, does he self-destruct? Seven years ago, he put me through a lot with his reckless behavior, and now I'm not sure if I can look past this betrayal. Yes, he came clean to me, but I can't seem to move beyond this feeling of violation. When I look at him now, I feel nothing, and it's breaking my heart because I really care for him. Yet, I can't see anything changing. I feel so conflicted. We've been together for so long, we share all the same friends, and we've built a life together. Can we come back from this? Or is this what falling out of love feels like? Relevant Comments Commenter I genuinely cannot comprehend how you managed to remain non-violent, as I would have likely reacted differently. In fact, I would honestly prefer dealing with infidelity over this situation. He only confessed because he had no other option left. 
you need to contact the police, or if you prefer not to take that step immediately, you should insist that he repurchase every single item he took. If he fails to do so, then you must call the authorities. Additionally, you need to pursue legal action against him. This situation is utterly insane. I am deeply sorry that you are going through this. The one person you should be able to trust has repeatedly betrayed you, taking advantage of your absence to harm you. Please take all the time you need to heal from this massive betrayal. Who steals from the deceased, from their own partner? And who is to say he didn't use any of the stolen items to fund a drug habit as his actions exhibit typical drug addict behavior? Never ever consider returning to him or reconciling. OOP. He chose to inform me over the phone while I was away on a work trip. I returned home last night and witnessed the damages firsthand. I have since given my notice at work, which led to a confrontation with my family. As a result, I now feel like I am losing both my family and my relationship. Commenter, I want you to take note that this scenario is ostensibly the same as it was seven years ago. Back then, due to stress, he spiraled into selfish and self-destructive behavior. It was only through your good grace and support that things worked out, with you forgiving him for the time he wasted and the pain he caused you. This time, however, he was more subtle about it. He quit his job without any planning or realistic goals. Whether this indicates a breakdown or a severe mistake, I initially thought the reveal was going to be that he cheated and began stealing from you to sustain his downward spiral, just like seven years ago, but this time it was done behind your back. He can't pay you back. The money he earns and gives to you is simply coming from your joint resources. It is still costing you. You can't reclaim these last two years, two years spent subsidizing his spiral without even knowing it. That money is gone as long as you share finances, which was the entire point of this exercise. Still, you also tolerated this for two years, not to mention what happened seven years ago. I understand that you care about this guy, but this really is the time to get real about your life. This is a question of how many more times you are willing to go through this cycle. I worry that your life, stuck with a toxic family, has increased your resilience in a counterproductive way. It has led you to put up with his nonsense because, in some ways, he is less awful than they are. Update First, I would like to thank everyone who commented on my original post. As hard as it was, I read every one of them. Honestly, I did not expect so many people to be angry on my behalf and I am truly touched. In my life, I have learned that the best way to answer others' sincerity is by being sincere myself. So I'd like to try here. I have a very small circle of people. I would say the two most important people to me in the past 15 years have been my boyfriend, BF, and my little sister. They are the only two people I talk to nearly every day and do most of my everyday life with. A little over a year ago, I almost lost my little sister when she overdosed on prescription medicine and attempted to take her own life. I was the one who found her afterward and spent the next three weeks by her side in the ICU. The whole ordeal could be its own post, really. Now, the person who had been my best friend for my whole life has me blocked in every aspect of her life for reasons I still do not know. I still wonder if she blames me for leaving that night as much as I blame myself. In my grief, I lashed out at my toxic family for not listening to me when I expressed concern about her, for not doing more, for not even being at the hospital when she needed them, and for expecting me to be the one to tend to her while she was in rehab. Because I lashed out at them, I was ostracized. The only time my family talks to me now is if it has to do with work. My birthday came and went without a single one of them reaching out. This is why I was compelled to quit, as the silence and isolation were slowly driving me into depression. During all of this, I have been clinging to my BF. It would have been too difficult to go through without him. This is the main reason why I didn't immediately kick him out when he came clean. I've lost my best friend and any support from family. When I gave my notice, only one person asked me to reconsider. The rest said good riddance. Even if my family is toxic and awful to each other, it still hurts to be cast out so thoroughly. So when my BF came clean to me, I just went numb. It felt like I lost what little fight I had left in me. It feels like the fabric of my life is coming unwoven and I am falling apart. I am still deeply mourning the loss of my sister in my life and grieving a family I have given up on. I have lost a lot in the past year, and this is just the last thing I thought I had to worry about. As many of you stated, it sounded like drugs. 
I didn't get him to divulge exactly what he was doing with the money, but I pieced enough together. Addiction has once again taken him. My boyfriend is a sweet, doting, and genuinely funny person, but seven years ago he became someone I didn't recognize. His drug addiction was deep and unrelenting. It was a monumental uphill battle for him to get clean and stay sober. I told him I would only stick it through with him once, and if he ever started back down that road, I would leave. So I guess he got smart about hiding it. My being gone for about six months out of the year really helped him conceal it. I know some of you were very upset about me losing sentimental items, but my grandma's jewelry is all there. He sold my grandpa's collection of precious metals. My grandpa, being a child of the Depression, never had faith in banks and stored most of his assets in such a manner. All his kids and grandkids were given portions of that collection. These items weren't as sentimental as they were a safety net I had every intention of using if needed. There was a comment that was a few paragraphs long that left me shaken. It pointed out my denial, but also the fact that I already knew what I needed to do. I was looking for any way, any reason, any logic, something to not have to lose anything or anyone else right now, but I can't escape reality no matter how much I may try. Some of you asked how I could even contemplate staying. The easy answer is that I was, and still am, scared. Scared to face this world alone. Terrified, really. I have told him we have no future together, and we are working on how to best separate. It is amicable. I will not be reporting him or suing him. I have talked to his mom and dad about it, and they have assured me that I will be made whole one way or another. And he has promised as much. I know a lot of you will be disappointed in that outcome, but I just have nothing left in me. I'm exhausted. I don't even have the energy to get angry right now. Maybe once I have time to process everything, that might change. But right now, I need peace. For now, I can only focus on the present and try to take one day at a time. I never thought I would be this alone. And the pain of losing the people I love the most in this world is a poignant heartache I will be grappling with for a good time to come. Relevant Comments Commenter I commented on your last post, but with the additional context provided here, more things are starting to click into place, especially regarding your family dynamics. I previously emphasized how this situation mirrors a recurring cycle, and I want to highlight that again. No, we can't just move on from him stealing from me. This isn't merely about the act of stealing itself. The theft was a symptom of a much broader issue, his drug addiction and the cyclical nature of his struggles with it. This is likely something that will haunt him throughout his life. And the reality is that it's not a problem you can solve, particularly given that you are also grappling with your own set of challenges. You left because drugs have devastated his life, and you can't afford to be dragged down that path with him, for both your sakes. Now, it's clear that you need to focus on yourself. Stay vigilant with your ex's parents to ensure you get your money back. But in the meantime, look into ways to enrich your own life. This could involve joining social groups, picking up new hobbies, engaging in fitness activities, and so on. Your family and your ex have been constant sources of drama, and many people find that once they step away from such turmoil, the ensuing silence can be quite deafening. Therefore, it's crucial to fill those gaps as quickly as possible. Oh, op you once again summed it up exactly. Your comment on my last post struck me deeply. When you said that my resilience had increased in counterproductive ways, I felt a little called out. However, what you said was right. I do often question the magnitude of events happening in real time and usually shrug them off because they are not as awful as they could be. But I've been trying to learn to trust myself. I've been trying to be better than what my family is. You helped me realize that I was letting myself down and going back on the work I've been doing if I just once again let the chaos stay in my life. Thank you. Commenter. I'm glad that what I said resonated with you. While it struck you personally, I will say that this is the path to recovery that many of us with, let's call them, messy backgrounds tend to have to walk. Understanding that our very sense of what is normal is warped took me time to really grasp myself. But once you do, you are able to see everything in a new context. It seems you have started that journey yourself. You can see that you are universally supported here, even if the advice you receive varies from responder to responder. The reason I focused on the family and my advice was a reflection of the things you raised in your initial post. 
I think part of you was already on the verge of these breakthroughs. I wish you luck on that journey. Okay, friends, let's move on to another interesting story. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I really want 1,000 subscribers. My boss gathered money for flowers for me and then kept it for herself. Seven weeks ago, my dear grandmother, aged 91, passed away. A co-worker informed me that our supervisor had collected money from the team to buy flowers as a gesture of condolence for her death. However, no flowers were delivered to the funeral home from my supervisor and team. Two weeks after the funeral, I discovered that a local florist had failed to deliver all their orders for my grandmother's service. In response, I sent my supervisor a text message explaining the mix-up with the flowers. I expressed my concern about not having thanked her and the team, as I never received the flowers. Additionally, I wanted to ensure that she and the team were not financially affected by the florist's mistake. I also conveyed my appreciation for their thoughtfulness during this difficult time. My supervisor replied, stating that she had not ordered any flowers for the funeral and reassured me that no money was lost. Instead, she mentioned that she was planning to send something else to my new husband and me as a condolence. She added a rather casual, sorry I haven't gotten there yet. Now, seven weeks have passed since my grandmother's passing, and it has been four weeks since I sent the text about the flowers to my supervisor. Despite her assurances, my supervisor has not followed through with sending any form of condolences from the team for my grandmother's death. My husband and I have not received anything from her or the team, yet my boss still has the money collected from my co-workers, which could be considered theft. I am also deeply hurt by her apparent lack of sensitivity towards my emotions regarding the loss of a very close loved one. My grandmother passed away just 15 days after my wedding, which she couldn't attend due to the injury that led to her death. She was supposed to be the flower girl in our non-traditional ceremony, a detail I had shared with my boss. This period has been an emotional roller coaster for me. I am now uncertain about what action to take. Should I report this situation to HR? If so, what should I say? While my boss did not take my money, she did take my co-workers' money and failed to send their intended condolences. Should I inform HR that I feel I am being treated unfairly because my boss did not send condolences as she has done for others? She has consistently sent prompt bereavement gestures, typically within two weeks, for my co-workers who have experienced family losses in the past. While it's not required or expected for her or my co-workers to send condolences, it is a considerate thing to do. I worry that going to HR will exacerbate our already challenging relationship and that they will support her. HR might perceive this as a personal matter and simply think she was forgetful. She may receive a minor reprimand, but I fear I will bear the brunt of the consequences as the employee who reported her. Given that our team consists of only seven people, it will be obvious that it was me. Should I ask her again about sending the flowers or gift? It felt awkward when I contacted her previously about the flowers, especially after her dismissive response. Additionally, I'm uncertain about how to approach it because it involves a gesture of caring and other people's money. The entire situation just feels uncomfortable. Many people are advising me to let it go, while others suggest that she committed theft and should be reported to HR. What do you think is the best way to handle this situation? Update. I spoke with two of my most trustworthy co-workers, one of whom had initially informed me that she believed our supervisor was sending flowers for my grandmother's funeral. I shared with them that I had not received any condolences from our boss on their behalf and expressed my gratitude for their contributions when my grandmother passed. Both co-workers asked if they should mention anything to our supervisor. I told them that it was up to their own discretion. At that point, I decided not to pursue anything with HR, feeling it was more important to move on. At least I was able to thank my closest colleagues. Before our first staff meeting of the new year in 2023, our team was chatting about our upcoming plans. I mentioned that my husband and I were going to Florida in a few weeks to see my parents, including visiting my grandfather, who at 90 had decided to live in Florida with my parents after losing my grandmother. I had previously mentioned this new living situation to my supervisor and colleagues. To my surprise, after I shared my upcoming plans, my supervisor asked, How's your grandma doing in Florida? Wait, what? Grandma? I quickly and rather coldly replied, My grandmother has passed. 
My supervisor turned bright red and tried to cover her tracks by saying, Oh yeah, I meant your grandpa. I got confused for just a moment. I said nothing more and didn't acknowledge her clumsy attempts to correct herself. An uncomfortably long pause ensued before the conversation resumed. Later, my most confidential co-worker expressed to me how cringeworthy it was to witness. My supervisor knew she had inconsiderately asked about the well-being of a deceased person. Additionally, she was aware that she was holding on to money collected to give the team's condolences for my grandmother's passing. In early March, I received a text out of the blue from my supervisor stating in a very professional manner, I am so sorry. I just realized I have been remiss in sending a condolence gift from our team for your grandmother. Included was a $1.25 gift card to Starbucks. I sent the following message of gratitude to the team's texting thread. Thank you everyone for the $25 gift card to Starbucks in memory of my grandmother passing in October. I appreciate the thoughtfulness. In the end, five months later and only after sticking her own foot in her mouth, my supervisor finally produced the gift. She ultimately fulfilled her responsibility and promised to our team to provide a condolence gift on their behalf, but not before embarrassing herself in front of the team and giving me the opportunity to point out her massive tardiness. How do you like these stories? Write your opinion in the comments. Let's get 1,000 subscribers on this channel. Love you.